Station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. And good afternoon and thanks for joining us for the news at noon. I'm Mark Hall. Let's take a live look outside. I believe that we are looking at the Kennedy Center. Clouds passing through today, but mostly sunny out there. Meteorologist Damon Madsen joins us. Latest check on the forecast. And Damon, first of all, happy Monday to you. Happy me. Monday. We're going to get through this together like we always do. Always. How are things looking today? Well, we've been all right so far. Okay. We've had those clouds passing through. Some folks may have noticed some rain a little earlier on, and uh, we're going to have to keep watching out for that as we go throughout much of the what, day. You know what? Was that rain that I heard last night or this morning, like 3 in the morning? There you go. That Man, was it. It was so therapeutic. And, you know, it wasn't waking me up, so it was oh, yeah. beautiful. It was a beautiful thing. That's when we like to have that rainfall. <laughs> Do it at night when we're sleeping. It is definitely a lot more enjoyable. You don't have to be out in it. And there you go, folks. Again, there is some of that rainfall. It was mostly back toward the eastern shore that a lot of the activity took shape this morning. Again, that is from a storm system that is just lingering off the Carolina coastline. And a couple of showers did move far enough west into D.C. and the I-95 core. Or now our western counties, not as much activity was found overnight last night, but we're noticing a trend now into the afternoon. Some showers are starting to push back to the west and pop up near Luray, Front Royal, and we also have a shower right now just between Charles and far southern Prince George's County. So there's that storm system. I was talking about a lot of rain going on down toward Virginia Beach, the Outer Banks, and as we get into the heat of the day here, the very western edge of that system system will start to allow some showers and storms to pop up and be with us through the rest of the afternoon and evening. But one thing this rainfall and the cloud cover is doing to help us out, it's keeping things a little bit cooler overall. We're only at 81 in DC and much of the mid-Atlantic and Northeast hanging out in the upper 70s to low 80s. Not bad at all here for late July, and that's where our temperatures mostly will stay. Mid 80s is about all the warmer we are going to get. But like I was mentioning, unfortunately, that comes at a cost. Scattered showers and storms will be possible all the way through the evening, especially along and east of DC in the I-95 corridor. So keep an eye to the sky here today folks, but as we head toward the latter portion of the week, are we talking about possible record setting temperatures? We'll have a full check of your forecast in just a bit. All right, thank you. Excitement over the commander's new era is translating into a surge in ticket sales. Sales are up 52% since fans learned that Dan Snyder was out, and the Josh Harris group was in, and that's more than what the team sold for all of last year. Training camp starts in a week. Josh Harris, a Chevy Chase, Maryland native, wrote an open letter to fans saying that it's now a dream come true and he's very excited for this new journey. Harris and the commander's ownership group wrote an open letter to the fans in yesterday's Washington Post wrapping around the entire paper and it reads in part, it's no secret that these past few years have been tumultuous for our franchise and our fans, but today marks a new era for the commanders. Harris goes on to say that our promise is simple, that we will do the work, create the culture, and make the investment needed to deliver for the team and for Washington and the surrounding region. Well, players are certainly happy, and fans are back on their side. I'll, I'll say it forever, man. I think our fan base is the best in the NFL. Now, I think they've felt some way about the old regime, and. When you feel something about a product and you don't support it, that's the loudest voice any consumer can have, and I think they've shown that. So to have them back on our side is amazing. Well, training, practice, training camp practice starts Wednesday, and it's open to the public on Thursday, and we will be there from the start to finish, and the season kicks off September 10th against the Arizona Cardinals right here at home. One well, other news this hour, a push to help people in the district keep their cars from being stolen, specifically owners of Hind Days, our Shanika Grimshaw is here with more information about the anti-theft efforts. Hey, Shanika. Hey, Mark. Yeah, that's right. Mayor Muriel Bowser announced that the Hyundai Motor Company is setting up an anti-theft mobile clinic in the area. So this is all an effort to increase vehicle security. You may remember all the reports we've done this year on how a TikTok video set off a spree of Hyundai and Kia car thefts. Now, the companies eventually came up with a fix, a software fix, to help secure those 
cars. Now this clinic will provide that latest technology to drivers who own or lease certain Hyundai models. The technology will be installed by Hyundai technicians. Some good news here, it won't come at any cost if you live in the district. You can take advantage starting this Thursday, July 27th. Mayor Bowser says these thefts have put pressure on some motorists. Many people have been impacted uh, and having your car stolen is stressful, frustrating, maddening, uh, and costly. Now, according to officials this past year, about 1,400 cars have been stolen in the area. They believe the spike in the car theft happened because of social media trend. One trend shows users how to use or steal a car using a USB cable. Now, this initiative lasts for a few a few days actually that's ending july 31st so the clinic will open from 8 a.m to 7 p.m at rfk stadium all right shanika thank you very much well new this hour bill preventing steep rent increases in montgomery county is now law montgomery county executive mark elridge says that it just signed off on it this last hour and the montgomery county council passed the bill last week this rent stabilization law caps yearly rent increases to inflation plus 3%, but no more than 6%. Over 35% of Montgomery County residents are renters. County Executive Elrich is calling it a big win for tenants. Elrich also says that he hopes the law provides housing stability for families in the county. And happening now, the Greenbelt College Park, Hyattsville Crossing, and West Hyattsville Stations are all closed, the Metro or being closed. The Metro is installing at fiber optic cables and maintenance on the line. Free shuttle buses are available until the stations reopen. Right now, the date's set for September 5th. And today marks the start of a new hiring system in the district. It's to keep drivers from blocking public bus lanes. DC News Now's Lex Juarez has the heads up for drivers from Columbia Heights. Right, well, the first thing they're going to notice are cameras on the outsides of Metro buses. And that's because they're going to be catching people who are driving or blocking these bus lanes like the one right here on 14th Street Northwest. Well, WMATA and DDOT worked together for this program. There's going to be a total of 31 bus routes that are going to be monitored in the hopes that traffic will move along smoother without drivers taking up the designated bus space. Well, it's not only becoming a problem for traffic congestion, but for those who use the the bus system and WMATA drivers who have a schedule to stick to. Right now, drivers who are caught will get a warning, but starting early September, it'll be a $200 fine. And bus riders are welcoming the change. You got elderly people and you got people with wheelchairs, and it's hard for them to get, uh, hop on and hop off the buses with all these cars in the uh, way of the bus lane. And while WMATA is only adding this measure to buses in the district right now, they are considering adding it in Virginia and Maryland. In Washington, I'm Lex Suarez, DC News Now. Our thanks to Lex and hate crime charges being filed against the man accused in a mass shooting last month in Annapolis. Three people died, three others were injured. Charles Smith facing, is facing 42 charges, including hate crime charges, and that's according to court documents. Prosecutors say Smith was originally charged with second-degree murder. They added the hate crime charges when they determined all three victims, including the father and son, were Hispanic. Costco is cracking down on memberships. DC News Now's Corey James breaks down what those changes mean if you're a customer. Costco says it is strictly enforcing its policies, only allowing its members to make purchases. Now, the wholesale store says employees are now checking for membership cars at checkouts after people have been caught sharing Costco cars with friends and family. Costco workers will validate each shopper's status by using the member photo on the card. The company said if the card is not updated with the photo, then an employee will ask for photo ID. The store is reminding customers that even basic memberships come with secondary members. That means the primary member can assign a household card to someone at the same address for no additional fee. A secondary member card will then be printed with the name of the household member with their photo and member ID. That is if you're only looking for one household card per membership. Anyone though looking for more than one household card will have to purchase an additional membership. In the newsroom, Corey James, DC News Now.